prepared for this revolution? The educational system. System. The educational system. No way. Countries? No. The the education. Not prepared at all. The educational. Let's change. I don't know your system, but I yeah. bet it's not very different from our system. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do you have to memorize things wait, wait. and our, take our, tests that are yes and no? Our, our system. It's the same. Our system, which is the same in Japan and it's the same in Korea and it's the same in many countries. There are some di differences, but basically they're the same. Uh, and the best way to understand what our public education system is, is to go back to how it got started. In the 1800s in the United States, uh, you had most young people were, were children of farmers. They worked on the f in the fields. And um, when somebody proposed that the America institute a system of public education for all young people, uh, the parents of the poor, the poor parents said, no, we can't allow our kids to go to school. They need to work. Otherwise, we starve. We don't have enough hands to work in the fields. So they opposed public education. The people who favored it were wealthy, and the people who made it happen were business. In the late 1800s, the business community said, you know what? All these kids are coming into the factory, but they're coming from the farms, and they're not good factory workers. You know what? They come late to work. You can't count on them. They don't. They, they're not good. At harvest what we time, need, they fail. What we need, they said, and these are the actual words that they used in English. You translate them. Quote: We want a system that will uh, uh, create quote industrial discipline. End quote. What was industrial discipline? Industrial discipline meant you showed up on time. And you did the same work again and again and again and again, just as you did on the assembly line. And you could read the sign that says, don't put your hand in the machine. Yeah. Um, and and uh, what happened was we designed uh, schools that actually um, resemble the factory. Uh, if you look at our schools even today, they simulate factories. Kids have to arrive on time. Why is that? Because in the field, if you come late, it doesn't matter much. Your, your Uncle Charlie can, you know, fill in for you for a few minutes. And the bells ring to but, tell you when the class but ends if, and the if, next if one. If you, begins. as one person, comes late to the assembly line, you might have a thousand workers standing by doing nothing, waiting for this function to be done before they can work. So the cost of, of, uh, of the workers coming late is extremely expensive. And the teacher is up front, and the teacher is the now, boss. So now you train that's, children. Yeah. That's the, the you, train you You have years. to arrive on time. Uh, you have to be at school at a fixed time. And in the U.S., we have uh, many, many thousands, of, hundreds of thousands of kids who are taken by bus to the schools. They have the yellow buses. Well, they're preparing the children to commute to work. In, uh, in the in the factory now what's happening now and now more and more people aren't working like that they're working at home or they, or they work at different hours strange hours and so forth and you don't need everybody showing up at exactly the same time so what we have are schools that were literally designed to provide the workforce for an industrial age economy and they do that very well but that's not the kind of economy that we have anymore and therefore, the entire system is obsolete. And, and I was waiting for years. I mean, I've been saying this, both of Heidi and I have been making this speech for years and years and years. But uh, uh, we were waiting for Bill Gates to say something. And, if, and about two years ago, he finally said the right words. He said, we cannot reform our education system. We must replace it. And he is right because the system is designed, as I said, to prepare people for yesterday, not for tomorrow. Now, that's an extremely difficult and painful thing to do. Uh, you have millions of, in, in the U.S., millions of people working in the schools, uh, you know, teachers and uh, other uh, people, and it's very uh, dangerous in terms of uh, they may lose jobs. Uh, and this doesn't mean the teachers are bad. My sister's a teacher. I don't hate her because she's a teacher. But the system she's working in is, is a disaster today. And, um, and therefore, we're going to see 
battles about education in country after country after country until this system is broken and replaced. Uh, we've been going to Japan for 38 years, and for 38 years, the Japanese have been saying they want their children to be creative. Uh, and we always got questions about how you can uh, change education to make kids more creative and, in, and innovative and so on. But they keep the school system exactly the same, or they even intensify it, because they have uh, cram schools, hmm. and uh, kids start um, going to cram school for calculus when they're 11 years old. Uh, and they've just we were just there um, uh, about a month and a half ago, and uh, they've just decided that the Indian schools, they so now they're starting kindergartens and first grade and second grade based on the Indian method, which is to keep the school the kids in school for 11 hours a day, and t the multiplication table, which is we just learned one, uh, uh, ten, ten the memory, ten, yeah. to memorize. The the Indian schools teach them a hundred times, you know. Kid multiplication tables that go up to a hundred, a hundred times a hundred, and this is what they consider being more creative. So um, that's, that's it's the, hopeless. That's the point. Um, that's but you need to teach kids to think, and how do you teach them to think? So their idea of having a better education system is doing more of the more same, the same. Yeah. <laughs> only it's longer and longer hours it. instead of changing what they're doing. <laughs>